So we will look into something called queue in free autos. Um, let's say you have a task T1 and a task T2. And T1 wants to send some data to task 2. Now in uh, in multitask or multi-thread programming, this is a bit complicated because you can either use some global variable and you need to use some mutexes to protect it and and also sequencing the data it might be a bit complicated but you, if you use something called Q Q is more like a buffer you can use the Q where task 1 will send some data to task to, to the Q buffer and task 2 will read the data from the Q buffer um, what happens is task 1 it starts uh, filling the Q buffer with some data and task 2 when the CPU it switches to task 2 it reads the data from the queue buffer and every time it reads the data it starts deleting the data from the queue buffer and making space inside the buffer each of these blocks are uh, in the queue buffer it can be of any data type or any size so if you want to send some data which is an integer you can define each of these block size to be an integer it can be a float it can be a character a single byte or even a structure that you define yourself let's see how we can do that in our code um, the first thing you do is you include the q.h header file and you need to create a queue you use the data type q handle underscore t and give it a name I will call it my queue and since task 1 is going to send some data to to the queue so I need to create the top create the queue here um, and I do that by using the function called xq create so my queue equals to xq create and there are two parameters the first parameter is going to be the size of the queue which means um, this is a queue that has five blocks so the size of the queue is five So I'm going to use five as my first parameter. And the second parameter is going to be the size of each of these blocks. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I want to send an integer, I can use size of integer. If I want to send a float, it can be size of float. But for this example, I want to send a string buffer. So let me create a buffer here. I'll call it my TX buffer with a size of 30. And I want my each of these blocks to have a size of 30 characters. So I will use my dx buffer. So I have created my queue. And I want to send some data to, to this queue. So let's fill my dx buffer with some data. Sprint at my dx buff. And I want to send a message called message1. And to send the data over the queue, you use the function xq send the first parameter to this function is the queue itself to which you want to send the data the second parameter is going to be the pointer uh, to the data that you want to send which is my tx buffer and the third parameter is going to be the block blocking time so you use uh, tick type underscore t and i want to use my blocking time as zero i can send some more data here um, I uh, will send message 2 and then message 3 so uh, the task 1 is going to send 3 messages uh, to the queue buffer and in my task 2 I want to read those data I want to retrieve it from the queue buffer and store them into uh, a string buffer called uh, my rx buff which is also going to have a size of 30 and in my infinite loop I want to constantly check if there is some data in the queue that are waiting to be read so I can use the condition if my queue is not zero which means that there is some data in the queue buffer then I read the data and I use the function x q receive the first parameter is going to be the queue similar to how we did in xq send the second parameter is going to be the pointer where I want to store the data, which is my Rx buff. And the third parameter it's, uh, is going to be the blocking time. Now, I need to give it some, some blocking time so that it has enough time to wait and read the data. 
so this will read the data from the Q buffer and I want to print the data so data receive my my rx buff now this function xq receive it will return a value of 1 or 0 uh, if it has a to indicate if it has received the data successfully or not so i can use an if condition here so if xq receive is 1 only then i want to print the data so i can take the print condition the print function and put it inside the if condition so if we run this program now um, let's build it and program Okay, so it has programmed the board. So let me run the program again. You see, it starts printing the data that I have received in task two. So it says uh, data received message one, and then message two, and then message three. So I'm sending data from task one to task two using this queue buffer. Um, there is another thing that I can do is uh, if I use a function called x task uh, x queue send uh, to front then what this function will do is it will uh, write the data into the queue buffer in the reverse order so that when task 2 um, reads the data it will read the the last data sent by task 1 uh, first and then uh, it will and, and the first data that you send from task 1 will be read last so the order in which you are retrieving the data in task 2 it will be reversed so I will replace all the functions here with x task excuse sent to front and let's uh, rerun the program and if I run it I can see that it's it prints the data in the reverse order so it prints message 3 first and then message 2 and then message 1 um, uh, there's another function I can use uh, it's called uh, xq uh, messages waiting so if I print this function here I can find out how many uh, data are waiting in the queue to be read uh, they are pending to be read by task 2 so uh, let me print that here uh, data waiting to be read will be and the function is ux q messages waiting and the parameter is going to be my q so this will print uh, the number of messages that are waiting to be read in uh, in this queue buffer which is three in this case because I have sent three messages and another function I can use is uh, to find out the available spaces so spaces what do you okay. And the function is ux q spaces available, and the parameter is going to be my q. So um, the the number of data that are waiting inside the queue to be read is going to be three, and we know that the size of this queue is five. So five minus three is two. So the available spaces will be two. So if you build this program and run it.
there I can see uh, data waiting to be read is three uh, available spaces is two.